Hey guys and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today I'm finally covering something a lot of you guys have been asking about and that's Ryzen Mobile. Yep, I have finally managed to get my hands on one of the only Ryzen Mobile laptops in the wild, the HP NVX360, to look at how AMD's latest mobile silicon performs. Of course, this isn't the first time we're seeing AMD APUs in laptops. Even today, you can buy a low-end notebook with the Stony Ridge APU inside, complete with all the wonders of an excavator-based CPU. It's at the high end that AMD has been absent for generations, mostly because of their slow and inefficient CPU architecture, which allowed Intel to command that mobile throne for years now. With Ryzen and the Zen architecture, everything has changed for AMD. Not only are their desktop parts very competitive against the latest from Intel, but it's also allowed AMD to re-enter the mobile space with a set of APUs actually up for a fight. Thanks to these products, codenamed Raven Ridge, we might actually see some competition back in the ultra-thin laptop market. The two APUs in the Ryzen lineup for now are the Ryzen 5 2500U and the Ryzen 7 2700U. Both pack four core, eight thread CPUs, the same as the latest eighth gen laptop CPUs from Intel, along with DDR4 2400 memory controllers. As you can see in the table, clock speeds range from 2.0 or 2.2 gigahertz base, up to 3.6 or 3.8 gigahertz boost, right in the ballpark of KB Lake refresh. The big thing to note here isn't the CPU though, which admittedly is a lot faster than anything AMD has produced in the mobile space for years. In fact, it's the GPU where AMD has a huge competitive advantage over Intel. The Ryzen 5 2500U we're looking at today has a Vega 8 GPU with eight compute cores and a total of 512 shaders clocked up to 1100 megahertz. This GPU is easily twice as fast from a pure compute perspective compared to Intel's UHD Graphics 620 currently used in eighth gen parts. It looks faster than Iris Plus graphics on paper as well, though Intel hasn't even begun rolling out those GPUs in quad-core ultra-portable SKUs. So the Ryzen 7 2700U is even faster, with more compute cores at a higher clock, but I'll have to hunt down a product with Ryzen 7 inside to get a better idea how it performs. Here we'll be focusing just on the Ryzen 5 2500U. The impressive aspect to the new Ryzen mobile parts is they cram both that quad-core Ryzen CPU and a powerful Vega GPU into a 15 watt TDP. That's the very same TDP as Intel's equivalent 8th gen CPUs, but with the potential for extra performance. Pretty much sounds like a winner, right? Before I get into some juicy benchmark data, I did want to talk about the test procedure because testing with a laptop CPU or APU is different and more challenging than testing a desktop component. That's because laptops come as entire systems, so you know it's hard to lock down variables and directly compare apples to apples. Aspects like the cooling solution, which impacts throttling, storage, memory, software clock speed tweaks, and battery life all vary between devices, and with very few Ryzen laptops on the market right now, we're pretty much relying just on data from one laptop, and that might be for a while. The good news though is that the HP NVX360 does provide a good test platform with comparable hardware to many ultra portables. My review unit has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 in a dual channel configuration plus a fast 256 gig PCIe SSD, which is great for reducing bottlenecks in those areas. Power consumption and battery life is harder to test and I'll comment on that a bit later, but for now, let's get on to the benchmarks. The first couple of benchmarks for PCMark I'm going to breeze through as this test does stress a lot of different system components, not always just the CPU and GPU. However, I have included it here to see how a Ryzen laptop stacks up against some of its competitors in a brief sort of fashion. Depending on the workload, the Ryzen 5 2500U either sits between the Core i7-8550U and the Core i7-7500U, or it's in the mix amongst Intel's 7th gen Kaby Lake CPUs. Intel's 8th gen CPUs were routinely 10 to 20% faster in these tests, which is an interesting result, but we'll have to look at some more tests before we conclude anything. 
So Cinebench is one of the strongest results for the Ryzen 5 2500U. In the multi-threaded test, the CPU is just slightly slower than the Core i7-8550U. And let's not forget that the i7-8550U is a higher tier product than the Ryzen 5 2500U. The Ryzen 7 2700U is clocked 5 to 10% higher and no doubt would beat the i7-8550U in this test. If you've been following Ryzen desktop coverage, the single threaded result won't surprise you though. The i7-8550U is a good 17% faster here. Interestingly, on a clock for clock basis, the 8550U is clocked 11% higher here in single core workload, so read into that 17% gap what you want. Encoding X264 videos is a tougher task for the Ryzen 5 2500U. In the first pass, the 8550U is a huge 38% faster, though strangely this margin is narrowed significantly in the second pass to just 3%. And it gets even tougher in X265 encoding, where Intel's 8th generation parts hold a commanding lead. The 8550U is a good 23% faster in this workload, encoding the hour-long test video in an hour and a half compared to two hours for Ryzen. Microsoft Excel is a short workload that favors high boost clocks. Here Ryzen is also slower than Kaby Lake refresh to the tune of 27%. Again, this isn't a hugely surprising result considering the 8550U holds a clock speed at advantage and Intel's Kaby Lake architecture also has higher IPC as we showed in our coverage of desktop Ryzen. MATLAB, this is an interesting one because it's one of the worst results for Ryzen. In fact, it's so bad, I'm not quite sure what the reason for this performance delta is. The Ryzen 5 2500U is around twice as slow as the i7-8550U, slower than the very slow Skylake Core M3 CPU in our charts. Some of the MATLAB workloads uh, in our benchmark fare worse than others. The FFT and ODE are much more competitive, but it's still, it's not a great overall result and it leaves me just a little bit puzzled. In WinRAR Compression's multi-threaded workload, again, the Intel Core i7-8550U performs strongly, posting a 52% lead here, though this does vary by device. Single-threaded results, oddly enough here, are a bit better for Ryzen, reducing to a 27% margin. I also wanted to show memory bandwidth here as the Ryzen 5 2500U supports DDR4-2400 and pushes higher bandwidth than the KB Lake R Core i7-8550U, at least in the machines I've been testing with so far. Clearly we are not memory bandwidth limited in the benchmarks I've just been showing though because Ryzen 5 is still behind in a number of situations. So while AMD lists the maximum boost clock of the Ryzen 5 2500U as 3.6 GHz, the CPU does not hit this clock speed under sustained workloads to keep within the TDP, which is, you know, common behavior on these limited mobile platforms. With the Core i7-8550U, we saw sustained clock speeds during Cinebench in the 2.6 to 2.7 GHz range on all cores, despite a maximum all-core turbo frequency of 3.7 GHz. With the single thread though, the 8550U did hit that 3.7 GHz maximum boost frequency in a sustained workload. It's a similar story with the Ryzen 5 2500U. In fact, this APU varies on a per core basis more frequently than KB Lake R. However, I did see consistent performance around 2.7 to 3.0 gigahertz on all four cores, while only on a single core, the 2500U has no problem hitting that 3.6 gigahertz maximum boost clock consistently. This does give the 2500U a clock speed advantage in multi-threaded workloads and a small disadvantage in single core loads. So we've seen how the CPU performs. Let's move on to the big story regarding the Ryzen 5 2500U, the GPU. The Vega 8 GPU inside this chip is a beast compared to the UHD 620 graphics in KB Lake Refresh, boasting around 2.5 times the raw compute power. When you consider this APU features the same 15 watt TDP, this is an impressive feat from the AMD team. It goes to show how well their graphics architecture scales down. 
I'll get to actual gaming in a moment, but I first wanted to take a look at 3D Mark. I'm jumping right in the deep end here by looking at Time Spy, the most intensive 3D Mark workload that's clearly way too intensive to run sensibly on a laptop. However, it does give some interesting insights, particularly as this test is entirely GPU limited. Here, the Ryzen 5 2500U is just over twice as fast as the Core i7-8550U when viewing the overall score, and this improves to a 2.1 times lead in the graphics score. What this shows is that in a very intensive GPU workload, Ryzen has more than a 2x lead in the same power envelope. The Ryzen 5 2500U also has a 2.2x lead in Firestrike, though as we move down to the less intensive workloads, Ryzen's lead starts to slip in the overall score as the tests become heavier on the CPU. In Skydiver, we see a 1.82x lead for Ryzen, and in Cloudgate, this drops to 1.33x. Let's not forget here that we are comparing Ryzen 5 to a Core i7 either. The Ryzen 7 2700U uses a Vega 10 GPU with 640 shaders compared to 512 in Ryzen 5, with a clock speed boost as well. So in comparing Ryzen 7 to Core i7, we will see AMD's APU uh, pull ahead. But Again, we'll have to wait till I actually get my hands on Ryzen 7 to test that out for proper. Obviously, a lot of you will be interested in whether the extra GPU power Ryzen Mobile provides is enough for actual gaming on these ultra portables. I'll have a full exploration of Ryzen Mobile gaming coming up a bit later, but I have tested a small handful of games on the NVX360 to see what is playable. So ultra portables tend to be fairly slow, so I usually start by testing very old games. Well, not that old, but you know, from around 2013. For several years, these sorts of machines couldn't even hit 60 FPS in Tomb Raider, a game from 2013 at 720p with the lowest possible settings. These days though, the Core i7-8550U hits 93 FPS at these settings, but it's the Ryzen 5 2500U that pulls ahead by 26%. You can quite easily play this game at 1080p with some higher detail settings if you'd like though. The other interesting title to mention here is Metro Last Light at 1080p medium settings. This game is still utterly unplayable on the i7-8550U, pushing an average of 17 FPS. On the Ryzen 5 2500U though, this improves to a 33 FPS average, and this is a pretty intensive title, so it's an impressive result. And as for percentage gains, the Ryzen 5 2500U is 94% faster, which is a huge result in favor of AMD. I was most excited though to check out the performance of Civilization VI, not just because it's a more recent game, but also because it's very GPU and CPU intensive on laptops. As Ryzen has such a low TDP, there's a fine balancing act between giving power to the CPU and GPU when both are hit hard. As a result, neither part can run at its maximum power. However, with Civilization VI, we can see that although the Ryzen 5 2500U is limited by its 15 watt TDP, it manages to squeeze out a ton more performance than the Core i7-8550U. In fact, this game goes from largely unplayable to completely playable with Ryzen Mobile, thanks to an 87% performance game. And at the same time, the game has a faster turn rate with Ryzen, and this is you know, provides a much better experience with this APU. Is Civilization VI alone not intensive enough for you? Well, how about running Metro Last Light and Cinebench Multithreaded at the very same time? In this test, which pushed the GPU and CPU at full 100% utilization, the Ryzen 5 2500U achieved a score of 304 in Cinebench while pushing 26.2 FPS in Metro Last Light. The Core i7-8550U hit 248 in Cinebench and 14.8 FPS in Metro Last Light. That gives the 2500U an advantage in both realms, 22.6% in CPU performance and 77% in GPU performance when both are being taxed simultaneously. Give each of these tasks Asks equal weighting and the Ryzen 5 2500U squeezes 45% more juice from the very same TDP which is an incredibly impressive result for Ryzen Mobile. The final game I took a brief look at is Grand Theft Auto 5. With the Ryzen 5 2500U you can actually play this game at 1080p with the lowest detail settings complete with a 1% low of above 30 FPS. This isn't possible at all on the i7-8550U where the game runs under 30 FPS on average. 
So all the benchmarks are now out of the way. So let's talk a bit more about how the Ryzen 5 2500U performs generally. In terms of CPU performance, the 2500U is slower than the Core i7-8550U on average. Not a perfect apples to apples comparison, I'll admit, but the i7-8550U is 30.6% faster in the benchmarks we used on average, skewed in favor of Intel a bit by the enormous disparity in MATLAB. Now the Core i7 CPU here is a higher tier model, but the equivalent Ryzen 7 2700U is only 10% faster on paper at best, so it's not going to be enough to close the gap here. For those following the desktop battle between AMD and Intel, these results shouldn't be a surprise. Intel still holds a strong IPC lead over AMD with their current products, and AMD does not have a core count advantage in their mobile parts like they do on the desktop. Even with clock speeds favoring AMD by up to 300 megahertz in sustained all-core workloads, at least in, in some cases, Intel's strong Kaby Lake IPC sees it outperform Ryzen Mobile across the board. This leaves the Core i7-8550U anywhere from 10 to 25% faster than the Ryzen 5 2500U in general when hitting all four cores, and typically that margin will increase in single-threaded loads as Intel gains a clock speed ascendancy. But you know, that's not always the case. Is this a bad result for AMD's Ryzen mobile CPU? Well, not really, as we are comparing Core i7 to Ryzen 5 here, as I haven't yet tested any 8th gen Core i5 parts. The gap will close a bit when pitting the Core i7 up against the Ryzen 7 2700U, or when comparing Core i5 to Ryzen 5. And while it's unlikely that AMD will take the lead in either comparison, the battle should end up only 10 to 20% in favor of Intel, and that's a great result considering AMD has basically come from nowhere in the high-end mobile space. It's also worth mentioning that most people will be upgrading to a Ryzen mobile CPU from an older dual-core Intel CPU, which the Ryzen 5 2500U trounces with its four-core power. Gains of around 50 to 80% relative to the i7-7500U are common, and that's only pitting Ryzen 5 up against last-gen Intel Silicon. Coming from a four-year-old laptop, this CPU will blow you away. But the real story here is graphics performance, which is where the Ryzen 5 2500U demolishes the Core i7-8550U. The Vega 8 GPU inside is considerably more powerful to the tune of more than 2x in extremely GPU-heavy benchmarks. It manages to achieve this while keeping to the same 15 watt TDP as KB Lake refresh, and even when both the GPU and CPU are slammed, the Ryzen 5 2500U pulls ahead by a huge margin. On paper, the Reg 8 GPU is about 2.5x faster than the UHD 620 in terms of raw compute, though in practical gaming scenarios, I saw anywhere from 70 to 100% more performance out of it. This is enough to make some games playable where they were not previously, like Civilization VI, even at admittedly low settings. As I've only had time with the HP Envy X360, it's hard to make a definitive conclusion on how power efficient the Ryzen 5 2500U is. I have started the process of battery testing the Envy X360, and results seem as expected for this sort of laptop, which is good news for Ryzen Mobile, but I do need some more data before it becomes clear whether AMD or Intel has a power lead here. The main issue with Ryzen Mobile for now is availability. This testing has shown the Ryzen 5 2500U is a highly competitive APU and will be especially attractive for those that want more GPU power in an ultra portable form factor. But you just don't have many options if you want a laptop with Ryzen inside. There's the HP Envy X360 and that's basically it at the moment. And to make matters worse, the NVX360 is a 15-inch laptop, which is a form factor where NVIDIA's MX150 discrete GPUs are readily available alongside Kaby Lake CPUs in similar ultra-thin designs. If Ryzen Mobile is to succeed, AMD needs to get this chip inside 13-inch ultra-portables, where discrete GPUs are rarely seen. If the Ryzen 5 2500U can hit the same levels of performance in a 13-inch chassis, AMD would have a serious win on its hands. But right now, there are no options, and we can't test that sort of thing just yet. So as we come to the end of this video, my final message to AMD and laptop manufacturers is get this chip in laptops. Judging by the chatter around the internet, there is genuine demand for ultra portables with an APU like this inside.
Anyway, I will have some more content on the Ryzen 5 2500U and the HP NVX360 coming up in the next few weeks. So I guess it's back to testing for now, but until then, I'll catch you next time.